Hello. Hello, AOS fans. It's the Agents of Sigma. Or should we say, the Agents of Shatterpoint. <laughs> so this is why Pete hasn't been on a Star Wars video. <laughs> <laughs> Just to can't help it. Pete is basically my sound effects expert. For those of you who've just watched our Shatterpoint content recently, or say our oh, my Shatterpoint uh, content recently, this is Pete. He's the other half of Agents of Sigma. He does most of the creative drive, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop really. uh, and uh, I've been I've been talking to the camera, but I've kind of found that it's tailing off. People have got this box in the wild. We haven't yet, Boo. Uh, which is a bit of a shame. But we have ordered one, and it's coming. And so we are going to be making content together. So I thought I'd introduce Pete. And just we talked to Pete about what his uh, love of Star Wars is, or maybe he doesn't love Star Wars. We'll find out. I hate it. And uh, we'll talk about his favourite characters, and then uh, what we're looking forward to coming out in the next few weeks, and then what we're gonna what we're gonna try and record on the channel. So I hope you find it interesting. I um, just want to mix it up a bit rather than just me just talking at you. Robin doesn't probably do this very much in his videos, but we're gonna plug it anyway. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that bell to get more content about Shatterpoints or all the other stuff that we cover. Absolutely, and do consider supporting us on Patreon. Um, we're going to have to put extra time and effort in if we're going to make this Shatterpoint stuff work. So if you want to see us do more and more Shatterpoint, then please do consider us uh, supporting on Patreon. There's quite a lot of us on the Patreon Discord already. We play a lot of Underworlds, uh, but quite a lot of people are definitely... Uh, we've got a Shatterpoint channel on there. A yep. lot of our patrons are already in it and are looking forward to the game. Yep. Uh, one guy um, also runs a game store and is uh, always there with the new releases and what have you. It's very good discounts. And you can actually find a link, an affiliate link in the description yeah. uh, to Will and Games. Do check those uh, out. And check those out for the best prices in town. Well, not in town, depends where you live. So, Pete, Star Wars. <laughs> Tell us, you're about 10 years younger than me. Yep. And so I think your experience of Star Wars is very different to mine. It is very different, yes. I mean, I don't think I watched the original three Star Wars films until like the mid 90s or something like that i mean they were probably on tv at some point in the 80s but it just definitely wasn't me watching it at that it's point it's probably going to be hard for the kids out there to relate to but basically if you didn't watch them in the cinema they were quite hard to watch yeah for yeah. a period of time because you didn't have vcrs no, no and if you did have vcr the vcr shop rental shop only had one copy which was normally out which uh, someone had <laughs> always rented out yeah. yeah and i think a lot of those films they were so groundbreaking when they came out in the cinema there just hadn't been like those kind of sci-fi films to that scale at that point in time. They were so amazing that by the time someone like myself watched them, I was like, yes, yeah, it's, it's a spaceship film. That is true. Yeah, it wasn't groundbreaking. You no, no. When I watched it, I watched it at the cinema when I was four. Really, Star Wars. I, mean, I watched the others at the cinema. Everyone smoking, <laughs> <laughs> drinking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they, but they, they obviously were absolutely groundbreaking then yep. um, but I think I think they just were harder to find I remember wanting to watch them and they just were never on the telly or your parents wanted you to go out for the garden centre for the afternoon and you missed oh, it when it was on the telly flipping garden centres <laughs> yeah so I think I remember going to the cinema to watch films four to six I, I went to the cinema for those and I did enjoy them and it was interesting because I almost watched them in kind of like the right chronological order. So you don't mean four, so, six, you mean one to three. Well, the th fourth to sixth film. See, this is where it gets ah. confusing. <laughs> because it's like, did you watch films four to six? Yes. Ah, so you saw the bit where he got his hand cut off. Wait, no, what? So I watched... See, four to six the fourth one to fifth, three. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I started with the chronological order of the films, but not the release order. In... So you started with episode one. Exactly, okay. yes. So I watched them, uh, so the, the, the Clone Wars and all that kind of stuff. Um, whereas a lot of people... My, uh, would have come into it like yourself you know Darth Vader the first time they saw Vader was him storming onto that ship and that that was an epic moment I mean even oh, I didn't watch the cinema I could appreciate it I remember that. being terrified at the age of four exactly and, and, and when I watched going, it don't worry he's just on a chair because they, they do the bit where he's holding his strangling yeah, and then they yeah. show a pair of legs dangling like, oh my god <laughs> he's, like, he's not really doing that so my I, dad whispered some amusing things, which over time, when I shut point content, I might reveal things my dad whispered to me while I was watching A New Hope. <laughs> well, that might be a bit dodgy, but... So, yeah, watching my them... My dad you're talking about! <laughs> <laughs> so, watching them, for me, was a very different experience, I think, for than someone like yourself. I, I watched most of them, apart from the middle three, I watched most of them at home, mm -hmm. um, especially the last three. I watched all of those at home again, because um, Disney Plus and all that kind of thing, so... See, where I was at the cinema day one, and exactly. I went twice. I went with my kids, and I went, well, I went first without my kids to enjoy it, and then I went with my kids to not, not enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I think 
they're obviously a piece of nerd culture. You can't not appreciate Star Wars if you're a nerd to some extent. You may not be a massive fan, but you're still gonna appreciate aspects of it, I think, regardless of who you are. And I definitely have my favorite moments in the films, my favorite characters. So what do you think about Shatterpoint then? I mean, it combines two things that I really like. So I, I do like Star Wars, um, maybe not to the same level that you do, but I do like Star Wars, and it combines that with tabletop gaming, which I'm a big fan of. Yeah, yes, you're a big, big, big Warhammer player. Yep. Um, and so what characters do you want to bring to the table? See, I'm a bad guy at heart. I, I like all we the bad guys. We do break guys. down that way, don't we? Yeah, In Warhammer we do. Yeah, I, like, I like the goody goodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like yeah. Vader, for me, he is the coolest character in the world. Um, I find that hard to disagree with, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, who doesn't like Darth Vader? I think everybody loves Darth Vader. And there's the comics, I've read some of the comics by him, and there's like a scene where he's, he's like standing, he's surrounded by soldiers, and he says something like, I'm surrounded by, I can't remember what the phrase is now, but it's sometimes I'm surrounded by idiots and dead men or something like that. It's just basically a prelude to, I'm going to kill you all now, and I'm going to make it look easy. Yeah. It's just cool. It's just Peter the team meeting, that is Yeah. It? Ah! Surrounded by idiots and dead men. But I do also like Yoda. I mean, who doesn't like Yoda? I'm not as much a fan of um, Luke Skywalker, though. I think... He's a bit whingy. I think nine-year-old me really liked him because he was the hero. But I think certainly young Luke, he's pretty he's pretty nauseating. Yeah, he's pr pretty, pretty yeah, annoying. He's pretty so, um, and who doesn't like Jar Jar Binks? Everyone. <laughs> Everyone. I like Jar Jar Binks just because so many people hate him so much. Yeah, you much. are contrary like that, aren't you? A little bit. No, so in the core box then, we haven't got any of those characters. No, <laughs> so <laughs> awesome. So, um, but I do also like some of the other baddies, like Maul. I, I've always liked Maul. Uh, he's a nice, simple character. He's yeah. not got a lot of depth to him, really. But you know, he does what he needs to do. Tilly wears less. He's not got a lot of height to him then either. Exactly. Spoilers, by the way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I do like characters like him as well. They're nice and simple to uh, to understand. There. And you do like the space skeletons. I do AKA love space the battle skeletons. droids. Do love battle droids. There's yeah. nothing not good about the battle droids. Yeah, and they are basically just space skeletons. Space they? skeletons. They basically yeah. paint them in the same way. Grievous. Also love Grievous. I think he's a fantastic character. He has a little bit more depth to him, I think, as a character because yeah. of his origins and stuff like. He's not just a bad guy. No. No, definitely true. Have you watched the Clone Wars TV series? No, I haven't watched any TV series. I haven't watched Mandalorian. Right. I haven't watched um, the Obi Wan series. I haven't watched that. They're always on my list. But and there's always no, Dave. The dead Dave. They're all dead. Dave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Have, have you watched Rogue One? No, I haven't watched Rogue One. You haven't watched Rogue One. Oh watched my Rogue God! One. Right, we'll cut this now. We're going to go and watch Rogue One. <laughs> you have to watch Rogue One. They're, they're all they're all things that are on my list, but it's just like I always feel like when I see a Star Wars thing, I think I'm not that into Star Wars, and it kind of always feels like I need to really be into Star Wars to watch Can I them. Walk out of an interview in my own, <laughs> <laughs> in my own studio. <laughs> it, it, you know what it's like though. Like if if someone were to say to you, "Oh, you should read this book. It's all about Space Marines or something like that," you just kind of think, "I don't love Space Marines enough to want yeah, to." the time on that. You know I mean, I've not watched or read a single episode or book of Game of Thrones. Exactly. So, and and I have. I've read several of the books and watched a lot of the TV show because I was much more into that. And with the Star Wars stuff, it kind of feels like I feel like I'm going to have to invest time for this. A bit like a lot of people with Marvel. They see the Marvel films, they're like, "No, I don't want to," because there's like 50 films now and there's a billion hours, and I just don't love Marvel that much. No. No, so, I, I've started to develop a love-hate relationship with Marvel. Like, yeah. I want to love each film that comes out, and I tend to not each hate one's it. a little not bit hate, less, not hate it, but I, just, I, I found myself now only watching them to see how the, it carries on the main story. Just and care what happens in the film because quite often you have to. Yeah, you have to just watch it, and that's one of the good things about Star Wars is whilst there is the main storyline, all of the offshoots they're doing, they're pretty discreet. Yeah, they they you can watch them on their own, and I do need to watch more of them. And when we start to do our shadow podcast, I'm going to. I'm going to do my Great. research. I'm going to watch more of them. So, of the kind of day one release, the core box release, then you probably don't know all the characters. Here. Not many of them. There are some obvious ones in there, like Maul and um, Anakin, that you're like, yeah, obviously I know who those are. Yeah, and you know, you know, who Ahsoka is. I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You kind yeah. Of pick that up. She's probably the best character in the whole of Star Wars now, because she has such a long story arc. I, uh, yeah. She's the most developed character in the whole arc now. I think. I mean, see, I'm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, from a, I mean yeah. from a story, from a story, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Whereas well, you have got like people like Mace Windu. I mean, who's cooler than Mace Windu? Well, I mean, nobody's cooler than Samuel Jackson. Exactly. I mean, the only person who might be cooler than Mace Windu is Nick Fury. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, so Ventress is like a. It's always a bit awkward when they start these things. She's basically a sort of Sith 
she's kind of Dooku's apprentice yeah. kind of thing so she probably quite like her she's pretty badass yeah yeah. I mean I like Dooku he's yeah. another fan favourite of mine well, and that's because Christopher Lee fan, exactly yeah. it's probably because it's Christopher Lee he yeah. could literally play any character in Star Wars and I'm going to love them yeah. he could literally play like a tall very angry looking Oompa Loompa and I'd be like I love it I love it I want to buy it <laughs> So you presumably they never had like a Boba Fett fetish like most most people who like Star Wars. No, no. Okay. See, I, I I think the the artwork for him has always been quite good. Yeah. But he's never been anything more than a bloke with a jetpack. No, to me. because he's barely in the original. Film. Exactly. He's yeah, barely, he's not really in it very much at all. We have so. got some Mandos in this box. Um, yeah. So in the next set of characters down, we've got uh, Bo-Katan and Gar Saxon. Who like they're both Mandalorian. Right. Bo-Katan's a woman, um, and she is the Clan Kree's. Mandalorian. So she's got the Clan Kree's Mandalorians under her, and uh, Gar Saxon's kind of like the baddie. He sides with Maul. Right. So he's kind of like bad man. It's like bad Mandalorian, good boy Mandalorian. It's a little okay. bit more subtle than that, but it is Star Wars, so it's not a lot it, more yeah, subtle. Yeah, I was going to say, Star Wars <laughs> isn't known for its subtlety in no. this respect. So I think you'll probably enjoy playing those. And of course, you've got uh, Kalani, the tactical droid, and some um, droids. battle droids. I do um, love droids. Good. So you're basically going to be playing sort of Ventress. The ta- uh, Kalani and battle yeah, droids, battle, yeah. or more, more yeah. than the ta- uh, yeah. Those are my my ideals, really. Yeah, Rex is a clone captain. If you okay. know Rex was, he's a clone captain. He, he's my son's favourite character in the whole the whole franchise. So also on day one, though, not in the core box, we've got the brilliantly, brilliantly named Hello There box. Hello There. Um, which has got Obi-Wan in it, unsurprisingly. How bizarre. Um, and a couple more clones. I mean, you should, you, they, the names of them won't mean anything to you, but there's no. some more clones. No. So I'm quite excited about bringing Obi-Wan. I, Who's not excited by Obi-Wan? Yeah, I, I, I like it. I don't like many good guys, but I like Obi-Wan. Yeah, it's funny. I was really didn't like his... When I first watched the prequel trilogy, I really didn't like Ewan McGregor's. No? No, but actually, as time has gone on... I, I guess I, 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 when you I've, get used to the fact that, you know, Obi-Wan was... Um, Alec Guinness. Alec Guinness, yep, yeah, sorry. I think that's it. I think now, I've, I, 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 although obviously in the Clone Wars content, it's not Ewan McGregor. Yeah. It basically is Ewan McGregor. Yes. And so that character now has become Obi-Wan and... Old Ben isn't really Obi Wan anymore. No, in the sense no. that you know, because again, he's not really in the films very much. No, no. Mm. And spoilers, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's absolutely right. He does. I got nothing. nothing he does. Other. He does. You can't deny that. Um, I'm quite interested in the other box, and presumably you would quite like a bit of Dooku. Yep. Uh, Django Fett, obviously Boba Fett's father, Mandalorian, yep. and a couple of Magna Guard. And they're kind of like skeletons. With I do extra, like the Magna Guard. Extra guards. electrical things, so yeah. I do like the Magna Guards, yeah. yeah I remember, I can't remember which film, which one it is, that they're, they're fighting with the Magna. It might be droid, the, the Clone Wars, or uh, they're fighting the Magna Guards. And yeah, that's, I think they, they will make very cool looking models. Spoilers, I shall write them and say them as Manga Guards at least, at least once. <laughs> <in the video. laughs> at least once. And then moving forward, we've got a load of characters coming that you'll never have heard of. Yeah. But we do have in July Appetite for Destruction, which is, I imagine, a, a, the, a name of a box which appeals to you, yes. your music tastes. Um, <laughs> it's got General Grievous in it. Oh, I do like Grievous. And the Super Battle Droids are the ones who are a bit like, much like zombie battle droids. <laughs> I mean, they should be a lot cooler. Yeah, yeah. They're a bit rubbish. They're almost like Doctor Who villains. They yeah, are. Yeah, they yeah, do yeah, look yeah. like Doctor Who villains. Yeah. And that's a whole different subject we could talk about for hours. But yeah, they do look a little bit rubbish those ones but I mean they'll probably be really good on the table moving forward you ought to be quite pleased because I do know you've got a bit of a theme for the Inquisitors you quite like the Inquisitors yeah see I haven't watched the Obi-Wan series and they kind of feature quite heavily in that I like those almost based purely on the models yeah. When I saw the models, I thought they just look really nice they to cool. me. They, they suit my aesthetic. And, and I know I haven't really talked to you about the mechanics of the game before, but they kind of can mix up the squad building mechanic a little bit, yeah, which cool. I'm interested to see how that's going to how that's gonna balance out. And then in August, we've also got, um, I think we've got Mace Windu coming, they've just announced, <gasps> with uh, some more clones. There's going to be lots of clones coming. How, how, lots how, of clones. Is, how is Mace Windu never going to be good? It's always going to be cool. So who are you going to paint? <sighs> see, this is the one problem I have with games that are based on pre-existing films that take all of their stuff from films or from TV yeah. show stuff, because there's a real pressure to paint them like they look. Mm. That's always a little bit of a turn off for me, so that when I'm painting other stuff, I can paint it however I like, I can do whatever I want with it within certain parameters, or even not really. Um, yeah. Obviously, when you get GW stuff and you follow in the artwork on the box, you can sort of go, well, it's kind of a blue, but it doesn't really matter if it's blue, it could be green or whatever. But with these, it's like, if you're painting Darth Maul, He's got to be black with red. Yeah, I haven't and seen anybody um, sort of not do that yet. <laughs> you, you kind of got to, because if you paint him like Smurf blue, yeah. everyone's going to go... He has got a brother who's yellow. 
it, yeah, it's coming true. in another box, which must be off, just off the screen there. Right one, but there's another box coming um, with, with um, it's kind of like because he's a Death of Mirian, and there's lots of Death of there's Death of Mirian um, Night Sisters and his brother Savage Opress coming. Yeah. So that's another box should be quite interesting. That, I think that'll mix up the mechanics too. But yeah, when you come to painting things like that, there's always that. Oh, if I don't get Obi Wan's hair or beard just the right colour, or if I don't get Anakin's hair the right blonde, or and white, there's a lot of white, there's a lot of black and white, because Star Wars likes their black and white, it is very black and white, <laughs> yeah. and you know, Stormtroopers, I, I don't fancy painting a lot of No, maybe storm we should troopers. say we'll just paint them how we want. I think we probably and then, will uh, anyway. Well, I'll give them your, what you're going to paint, and yeah, I'll yeah. buy the other same things and paint them properly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We should, we should. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll go, I'm going to move that one there, and you'll just keep <laughs> replacing the model. There you go. They do, they have said, oh, well, you know, it's your game, you can, you can paint it how you like, but you, the... Star Wars is such a strong. The Force is yeah. so strong in Star Wars. It, it, it is. You yeah. Can't, very hard to deviate. Very hard to paint pink stormtroopers or yeah. green stormtroopers. I mean, I know they kind of existed in different places. You could do sort of camo ones, yeah. but yeah, yeah I, I, I'm not like I say, I'm not a massive fan. But even as much as I am a fan, you know, Darth Vader is going to be black, right? Yeah. And and you just got to, you've got to do it. You've got. I you did can't see do there was else. a. a um, my son wanted to go to the Star Wars celebration, but we were away, so we couldn't go. But he we've been watching some cosplay videos, and there was a white Darth Vader. I don't know if he has precedence in any stories, whether there's like a there might be an alternate timeline where, where of where he's not naughty. Yeah, um, and um, you are naughty. <laughs> yes, exactly. He's such a bad Vader. I'm not sure who I'm looking forward to painting. I've, I've painted a few of the Legion characters. I like painting Mandalorians because you can you've got a bit more flexibility, although they are specific clans they, in this game but they still got, got more, yeah. you can do the colour plates a little bit differently yeah um, but yeah I think there is I think I, I like the scale of the model we've played some MTP so the model scale is going to appeal I think a little bit yeah and they're, and they're quite the detail on those is normally quite well, the soft is the right word but it's not too it's not too gay it's, not, it's not over the top no. ridiculous and yeah the other thing that appeals to me is that you don't need a thousand models you know you, you might paint 20 models but that's not just one unit no. that's pretty much oh i've done all my models i'm ready to go with yeah, it yeah well so. you can play with eight yes so, so so you could paint 20 and yeah. you've got like a whole yeah. thing for you and your mate or whatever if yeah. you're if you're into that uh, which i think legion all. we did try and play legion many years ago and we just never really got off the ground because it's kind of like i i mean i couldn't even assemble the battle droids let alone, <laughs> yeah. let alone paint them some of them with the legs on backwards like, <laughs> yeah. oh. um so yeah, I think that's the big draw for me. This is a, it's a small scale Star Wars game. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Do let us know if you want to see more of Pete. Um, I, I'm going to have to explain to him how the game works. We could we could no record idea. that if you like, but I think lots of people have done that, and I've been through it on other videos. But we could do that. Let us know if you want what you want to see, what kind of content you want to see when we actually do get games. Um, I'm not looking forward to painting the terrain. Actually, saying so we didn't mention the terrain, I'm not very good at painting terrain. Yeah, that's always a problem with. I mean, it's just so much. There's just yeah. so much of it. So and there's not loads of it, but you've got big flat panels, and yeah, yeah. it's very easy to mess up. I think, and then it causes, I'm one of those people who sees all the all the mistakes. I think, so. I think I'm my wife said I'm not at all looking at the state of our house, <laughs> uh, but um, not yeah. clean, but with painting. Painting, yeah. I think you know you know where you've missed. I think. Yeah. Which I kind of do know in when I'm cleaning as well, I just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we're planning to do kind of uh, record the games and then uh, commentate over the top of them what, what yeah. happened. We've, we've, we've done a few times with Marvel Crisis Protocol, we've done with Warhammer Underworld. Yeah, that yeah, seems to be the, uh, the sort of setup that works best for us and the videos then aren't too long and drawn out. But if there are aspects you'd like us to concentrate on, like Robin says, do let us know in the comments below. So thanks for watching. That's Pete. I'm Robin, and we'll see you soon, either in the Underworlds or somewhere in the Star Wars universe. <laughs>